Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos um, and on uh, this uh, video uh, tonight um, I'm going to be uh, giving you um, an update um, on some more uh, transfer uh, news because uh, uh, lots more uh, transfer news um, has currently um, updated um, Obviously you now uh, Solskjaer um, has revealed uh, that um, you know, his uh, targets are um, long term targets, so um it's not um assured that, you know, we will we will uh, sign um anyone um in January. But Solskjaer um, is looking to uh, you know bring around two um or three uh, players uh, to the football club um in January. But overall um anywhere um these are uh, lots of uh, players um on our um, agenda and it is a uh, very um imperative uh, next year uh, that we do um address uh, the deficiencies um in the squad and that we do uh, get the right uh, calibre of players uh, to Manchester United you know the right you know the players you know that can elevate this club forward and get us back you know to being um, a competitively level football club and get us back up there you know we're uh, challenging uh, for uh, major um, honours but I think you know we need at least another four or five more players you know but next year we've got to get a couple of midfielders in and um, we've also you know get a Got to get um, a couple um, of attackers in. Um, but yeah, but one of um, our main uh, priority uh, targets um, is Erling Haaland. Now, um, Erling Haaland um, has been subjected uh, to a lot of uh, transfer speculation. Uh, reports um, have uh, confirmed uh, today, earlier on today, that is, that uh, yesterday, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, had flew uh, to Austria uh, to uh, meet up uh, with Erling Haaland uh, to discuss um, uh, to to discuss a, a potential January uh, transfer um, and that. Um, and reportedly, you know, there's been other clubs that have uh, been um, in for Erling Haaland. Um, you know, recently it said that, um, you know, he's had uh, discussions uh, with Borussia Dortmund um, and RP Lesbeg, you know, he's had negotiations uh, with their uh, representatives. Um, obviously, yeah, the Red Bull Salzburg sporting director came out not too long ago and he actually, you know, said um, it's too soon for him uh, to join uh, Manchester United. United. I do believe if we do go in for Erling Haaland in January, he is going to cost us um, in the excess of around 50 or £60 million, pounds, even though it did uh, recently reveal that he's got around a £17 million, uh, release clause um, in his uh, contract, um, in his Red Bull uh, Salzburg uh, contract. Um, also, you know, Juventus um, have been in for him. Um, I think uh, Liverpool um, have been in for him, but, you know, I think we have emerged as the front runners uh, to get him in that. But he's a very uh, prolific goal scorer. Um, he's been a revelation this season uh, for Red Bull Salzburg. He has scored uh, 28 goals in 22 games um, in all competitions. Um, but I think if he comes to Manchester United, I think you know he can replicate you know what he's uh, done uh, with Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, don't forget, um, it'd be also beneficial to recommend him in because he's already uh, played um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's guidance uh, during um, his you know period uh, with Mould, and of course uh, Solskjaer um, is keen um, on a reunion. Uh, with the player. Don't forget around uh, three um, or four weeks ago, um, his actual father, um, Al Finch, uh, visit, visited uh, Manchester United's training ground. So obviously in that aspect, uh, that had uh, fueled uh, more uh, speculation. Um, uh, obviously, you know, Mini Raliola as well uh, recently urged him uh, not to uh, come uh, to uh, Manchester United. So I'm still sceptical, you know, that we'll get him. But, you know, his transfer to Manchester United uh, now um, is on. So Solskjaer, I know, has um, had uh, negotiations uh, with him. Um, Want to also give you some uh, latest uh, news uh, regarding uh, Jadon Sancho. Now, uh, according to recent reports, uh, we are emerged um, as the front runners uh, to sign Jadon Sancho. And, you know, we're actually convinced uh, that we can uh, sign him um, in January. Um, again, um, he's uh, going to cost uh, the club um, a substantial um, amount um, of money. You know, obviously, you know, we're going to have to pay in the excess of around uh, £100 million pounds for Jadon Sancho, uh, maybe um, even more. Uh, recently, you know, City um, have been in for him. Uh, City um, are looking to get him back because City um, had him previously, you know, before um, he joined uh, Borussia uh, Dortmund. I think City are willing to put put around £90 million pounds in for him. You know, Liverpool um, have been in for him. I don't really see um, how he would uh, fit uh, Liverpool's uh, system. But um, overall, anyway, you know, we've been long admirers um, of Jadon Sancho. You know, was in for him during the summer. We also identified him as our number one priority uh, target uh, back um, in January. But obviously, you know, we didn't get Jadon Sancho, you know, with our failure uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League. You know, but um, yeah, I think we are going to go in for him in January. 
I think um, he's actually enjoying the difficult time at the moment with Borussia Dortmund. Um, he's not satisfied. You know, he has been dropped in games uh, this season. Don't forget, not too long ago, Jadon Sancho was found around £86,000. Um, uh, yeah, but he's um, only uh, the age um, of 19, um, is Jadon Sancho. Still got um, a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. Um, he's primarily a right winner. Um, can also uh, play uh, centrally uh, and I would like him at Manchester United because I would be excited about the prospects of him you know playing alongside the likes of Daniel James Marcus Rashford um, and Anthony Martial but um, Bushy Dortmund got him for next to no you know they only paid around what seven or eight million pounds for him from Man City um, but obviously you know analyse his performances in the couple of years he's been with Dortmund his valuation um, has uh, persistently uh, grown Um you know, he has pers he persistently uh, grown in that. Uh, but like I said, a uh, very, very good player. Runs on and off the ball good. Can score goals, can create chances. And he's definitely, you know, the right uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United. He said the other week that it was more imminent that, you know, was going to get him next summer, you know, rather than January, you know, if we had to get him. Because he actually did say he wanted to leave Bushy Dortmund next summer. But Bushy Dortmund have, have had their overarching view on the speculation regarding Sancho. And, you know, they are determined, you know, to keep uh, Sancho uh, for them at least uh, this season. Uh, but I would be happy, you know, if Manchester United uh, did... Uh, get him in um, in January. Um, so I do do believe that Sancho and Erling Haaland are our two uh, main uh, priority uh, targets. Uh, like I said, uh, we've got a couple of uh, midfielders um, on our um, agenda. Um, there's obviously you know a lot of speculation going on uh, regarding uh, Christine uh, Eriksen. Um, you know, don't forget we was in for Christine Eriksen uh, during uh, the course um, of the summer transfer window. But eventually, you know, we opted him um, out of the race for him because uh, we do believe his preference um, is a move uh, to Real Madrid because. Because Real Madrid were in for him uh, during uh, the summer. Um, obviously, Tottenham and that, you know, were demanding a substantial amount uh, for uh, the player, but they initially uh, dropped uh, their price tag. So I do believe Christian Eriksen is still going to cost us in the region of around 60 or 70 million. Um, I think it probably would be more beneficial to go in for him next summer because uh, that's when his uh, current uh, contract term expires. But obviously, you know, Tottenham would want to cash in for him in January rather than let him go um, on a free uh, next summer. Uh, Christian Eriksen is predominantly an attacking midfielder. You know, we're probably, you know, seeing him um, as an adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Popper. Uh, Christian Eriksen um, is in his late 20s. He's 27 years of age. Um, he's now into his seventh season um, at Tottenham. He has made 218 appearances for Tottenham, scored 50 goals, provided 61 assists. Um, that's just um, in the Premier League. And I think in all competitions, um, he has made um, over 300-odd uh, um, appearances. Um but yeah, you know, um, he's another player um, on our um, agenda. Uh, I think Tottenham paid, was it just over £11 uh, million pounds from, uh, from Ajax uh, back in uh, 2013? Uh, but yeah, I think he'd definitely you know, complement our midfield. And, you know, he, well, he's a player that can score goals. You know, he can create chances, you know, like he's proven in the, you know, six years or so, you know, um, he has uh, been uh, with Tottenham. And he's also uh, well uh, Premier League uh, proven. Um, I don't think he's one of our main priority targets, but, you know, he's still... Um, on our um, agenda. Um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of talks um, about uh, Saul Ernegues from Atletico Madrid. Now, he's uh, another uh, midfielder um, on our um, agenda. Uh, Saul Ernegues, um is only uh, the age um, of 25, so he's actually you know, nearly um, in his prime. Obviously, you no, know, hasn't uh, played um, in the Premier League um, as yet. So, if Saul Ngiez, uh was uh, to come uh, to Manchester United um, or any English club um, or anywhere else, you know, obviously it would be no area for him. Area for him. You know, he would be playing them um, amongst uh, different uh, players. Would Saul Um But analyse uh, analyse his performances at Atletico Madrid. Um, I think he has uh, done uh, really, really well. Uh, because he's actually you know, spent the majority of his career with Atletico Madrid. You know, he's been in there, he joined their youth academy, was it in 2008? Been in their senior squad since like what, 2011, 2012, and has gone to make over 250 um, appearances. You know, he's can play as a central midfielder. He can also uh, play um, as a defensive uh, midfielder. Um, he, again, he's going to cost uh, the club um, a substantial amount of money. Um, I do believe you know we'd have to pay, you know, probably around 128 million for him. Um, 
but they are sticking to their valuation. Athletic Home Madrid, you know, they're not willing to lower their valuation. His initial release causes around um, £130-odd million pounds in his contract because he's still under contract of Athletic Home Madrid until 2026. Um, you know, don't forget a couple of years ago, um, he signed um, a nine-year uh, contract uh, with Athletic Home Madrid. Um, but yeah, you know, he's another, you know, midfielder. You know, we are seeing him as a replacement uh, for Paul Pogba, you know. Obviously, you know, James Madison, you know, he's also um, another uh, player um, on our um, agenda. Uh, again, um, I think, you know, he would be uh, the right uh, calibre uh, player uh, for uh, Manchester United. Uh, James Madison, of course, has been a revelation uh, since his um, arrival um, at Leicester. Um, you know, he's now into his second uh, season uh, with Leicester. But I think analyse his performances this season for Leicester. Um, he's replicating, you know, what he uh, did um, in his uh, debut season uh, with Leicester. You know, in total, James Madison, I think, has made around, is it 55 appearances in all competitions for Leicester and scored around uh, 14 goals. Obviously, the vast uh, majority um, of his appearances um, have uh, come um, in the Premier League. Uh, predominantly an attacking midfielder. Uh, quite a lot of times, you know, Brendan Rodgers um, has played him out um, on the left-hand side. You know, only at the age um, of 23. Um, obviously, you know, last season created uh, more uh, chances uh, than uh, any um, other uh, player um, in the Premier League. And we was in for him during the summer. Uh, we were tentatively linked with him. And what I mean in that aspect, you know, he wasn't one of um, our uh, main uh, priority uh, targets, but we were tentatively linked with him. Reportedly, you know, we've been in for James uh, Madison uh, since June. Leicester paid around £20 million for him from Norwich in the summer um, of 2018. But yeah, I'd love him, you know, to uh, come in. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, there is um, a lot of uh, players um, on our um, agenda and, you know, it's good that Solskjaer is making uh, plans uh, for uh, January. Um, I think, you know, our board are determined uh, to back uh, Solskjaer, you know, in January um, and next summer because I think uh, the board uh, realised that, you know, they didn't back uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer enough, you know, during uh, the course um, of the summer. You know, I credit Mulligan and Solskjaer in the aspect, you know, that he did recommend uh, three good plays to the squad during the summer. You know, we spent nearly, what, um, £150 million on Daniel James and wan and on Harry uh, Maguire. Uh, and, you know, it was good during the summer that we addressed some of the problematic areas. You know, you've got to say the three signings that recommended in, you know, you've got to say, you know, they've uh, been um, our best players uh, so far uh, this season. So what I mean is, you know, they haven't been accountable for any of our bad results um, or bad uh, performances. So, um, you know, that's obviously, you know, uh, very, very good. But there's only three players that are Oligan and Solskjaer's um, at the moment. So, you can quite frankly say um, he is uh, still um, in the process um, of rebuilding. You know, the vast majority of these players um, are Jose Mourinho's. Because take into account, you know, Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into the football club. You know, now Solskjaer um, is still um, inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them. But, you know, obviously, you know, recently Gary Neville's come out. You know, he's urged Solskjaer, you know, to spend in January. Um, Paul Scholes said the other week that he thinks Solskjaer needs another three to four more windows uh, to uh, turn uh, things um, around um, at the football club. Um, I do believe an estimated guess will be orchestrating on spending a substantial amount next year on recruiting new players I think we'll probably spend from 250 to 300 million pounds over the course of um, the next uh, couple of uh, windows uh, but definitely know where my recruitment um, has got to um, improve uh, so yeah guys, like I said, that's the latest news regarding Erling Haaland and Jadon Sancho um, and all uh, the rest um, of the uh, transfer uh, news um, as you all know, uh, we do uh, go up against uh, Everton. We go up against uh, Everton uh, tomorrow um, at Old Trafford, uh, two o'clock uh, kick off. Um, obviously, now I did uh, my preview uh, this morning, uh, building up to the game. I also give you my reaction uh, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, press conference uh, yesterday and that. Uh, but it's going to be a very, very interesting game. Um, I think it's going to be um, a difficult uh, game uh, for us. Um, even though Everton um, have enjoyed um, a very uh, difficult uh, start uh, to the season. Um, Everton, of course, have just recently appointed Duncan Ferguson. Um, obviously, you know, he got off to a great start. Um, you know, won his uh, first uh, game um, in charge, you know, with Everton. You know, obviously, you know, Everton beat uh, Chelsea uh, by three goals uh, to one uh, last week. Um, but he's, uh, the, he's, he's um, obviously, you know, the interim manager um, of Everton. I'm sceptical I'm skeptical that, you know, Everton, of course, uh, will uh, keep him on, you know. Um, and the good news is, you know, Chelsea um, have also lost uh, today, today um, at home uh, to Bournemouth. 
So, you know, we beat um, Everton uh, tomorrow. You know, we are just uh, two points uh, behind uh, that top four. We need to win tomorrow anyway, you know, to uh, keep uh, the pressure um, on that top four. You know, we actually, you know, could be in that top four uh, by uh, Christmas, you know, providing, you know, Chelsea uh, slip up um, again. And obviously, you know, uh, we, we uh, keep uh, winning. But I did initially say, didn't I, um, at the start of this season, that our expectations this season, you know, will be to finish in that top four. You know, so obviously, you know, we can get in uh, into the Champions League because we need a uh, Champions League uh, football, definitely. You know, Champions League football um, is always uh, very, very um, imperative. And, you know, we've got two chances of getting it. You know, either finishing in the top four or, you know, uh, winning uh, the Europa League. And the positive is, you know, uh, we, ha we have won the group with one group L. You know, we are um, into the uh, knockout uh, stages um, of the competition, but I definitely you know, believe uh, we are uh, good enough uh, to definitely know, uh, win it. Um, but I'm very, very confident, you know, we can uh, beat um, Everton uh, tomorrow. Um, we can beat them tomorrow, you know. Obviously, you know, we're looking for our third uh, win um, on the bounce um, in the Premier League. You know, obviously, you know, we've won as last uh, three uh, games um, in our competition, so hopefully, you know, we can uh, keep uh, this uh, momentum up. You know, we beat Tottenham 2-1, you know, we beat Man City 2-1 and we beat uh, Altmar um, on Thursday uh, by uh, four goals uh, to nil, you know, um, and obviously, you know, they were all uh, very, very um, good uh, performances. Wasn't so good in the first half um, against Altmar, but, you know, the performance was totally comparison um, in the second half, like I said, uh, we found our rhythm and, you know, got uh, the goals uh, that we needed and there was all, there was, there was all quality in them goals. Um, and um, like I said, you know, the wins um, against uh, Tottenham um, and Man City, you know, you've got to take into account, you know, they've saved um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, managerial uh, tenure um, at the football club. Because, you know, if we hadn't beaten Spurs, we hadn't beaten Man City, you know, I think Solskjaer uh, would have uh, been uh, sacked uh, by uh, now. And I even disregarding the City game, if we'd lost to Tottenham, you know, probably, you know, um, he would have uh, been uh, sacked. Uh, but Solskjaer, you know, was um, under um, intense uh, pressure, you know, uh, before uh, that, uh, before uh, the game. Um, against uh, Tottenham that, and obviously he's aware of the the amount of pressure you know that he's been under anywhere uh, for uh, the vast uh, majority um, of this season you know um, but I've got to say the City game you know is probably the best game so far in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial uh, career uh, with Manchester United Um but I think we can definitely know her beat um, Everton. Um, obviously, Solskjaer, you know, has recently come out and said, you know, we're no longer uh, the shambles. Um, we're no longer the shambles, you know, that, you know, was who was embarrassed uh, by Everton uh, last season because we lost to Everton 4-0 uh, last season um, at Goodison Park. Um, and I've got to say, that's um, probably our worst game under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era and probably, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's, um, you know, worst game so far in his managerial uh, career with the football club. It was back in April that uh, was that 4-0 uh, uh, defeat. And don't forget, um, after the uh, the game, Solskjaer um, had apologised uh, to Manchester United. So I actually, you know, respected him uh, for uh, doing that. But this game tomorrow is going to be totally comparison to the one last season at Gunnison Park. Um, obviously, we did beat them at home uh, last season uh, by uh, two goals uh, to one. Um, but, you know, we've usually got a really, really good uh, record um, against um, Everton. You know, like I said on my preview, uh, the last time uh, we lost uh, to Everton uh, was back at Old Trafford, uh, was back in 2013. And I think um, it was um, a goal uh, from uh, Oviedo. So we haven't lost to them uh, for uh, nearly uh, seven uh, years, you know. Um... <laughs> Um, obviously, you know, um, I think, you know, we'll definitely know win the midfield battle tomorrow, you know, obviously, you know, with Fred and McTom and where, um, you know, they've complemented each other fantastically well uh, recently, but we'll definitely win that battle um, in that midfield because um, a lot of Everton fans have got element of concerns about their midfield, you know, Everton, you know, like to soak cut the pressure, you know, they can counter-attack, they do concede a lot of goals, but they can also score goals, so they can show good um, attacking intent. But they've also got um, a lot of injuries um, of Everton, you know, they've got, um, you know, Theo Walcott out was one of their imperative players, Yerry Minna, you know, um, Coleman, Morgan Schneiderlin, uh, Fabian Delf. Um, yeah, so they have uh, got uh, quite um, a few um, injuries. Um, obviously, Everton are looking for a replacement uh, for Idrissa Gay. Um, Idrissa Gay uh, went uh, to, um, you know, PSG uh, during uh, the summer. So Everton, of course, um, are looking uh, for a um, replacement uh, for him. Um, Everton, um, 
obviously, I've obviously you know, got uh, quite um, a few uh, managers um, on their um, agenda um, who obviously you know, could uh, replace Marco Silva. Marco Silva got sacked after Everton's 5-2 uh, defeat uh, to Liverpool uh, the other week. Um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of speculation recently of Um Ryan Ray uh, possibly you know, taking um, over um, at Everton. Um, Sky Sports have confirmed uh, that, that he has uh, turned down uh, the Everton job. And I think he's also turned down two Chinese clubs, um, as Um Ryan Ray. Because don't forget, a couple of weeks ago, Um Ryan Ray was uh, sat uh, by Arsenal um, after just uh, 18 uh, months um, in jail. Uh, but a lot of people believe, you know, um, um, uh, you know, wouldn't be able to elevate um, Everton uh, forward um, anywhere because, you know, I think he would probably replicate Everton, you know, what he uh, did uh, do uh, with Arsenal, you know, he wasn't um, any uh, good uh, for um, Arsenal. Um, there's obviously, you know, been a lot of talks um, about, uh, you know, David Moyes, you know, uh, reuniting uh, with Everton and that. Um, I think if he went back to Everton, you know, I presume he, may, he probably, you know, would uh, do um, a good job. Because don't forget, you know, David Moyes um, enjoyed them a long uh, spell with Everton. You know, he managed them from 2002 to 2013. So he managed them uh, managed them uh, for um, 11 uh, years. So he was um, a long uh, serving uh, manager. Uh, but obviously, you know, since Moyes left Everton, you know, he's... And he's enjoyed a really, really bad time. You know, obviously, after he left Everton, you know, he obviously joined Man United. Um, obviously, you know, it was uh, Ferguson that recommended recommended him in um, in 2013. But Moyes um, um, only enjoyed them a 10-month uh, Ten ten month tenure um at the football club because obviously you know Moyes didn't exceed expectations you know he's an average ma average manager hasn't you know really uh, got um, a pedigree uh, behind him and doesn't really um have uh, that winning mentality so we sacked him after ten months um then obviously got the sats by Real Sociedad sats by Sunderland um he obviously you know left uh, West Ham recently um but there has been um, a lot of uh, talks um, about that uh, going on um obviously you know. Carl, there's been a lot of speculation recently as well um, about uh, Carlo Ancelotti uh, going uh, to Everton because I was reading uh, recent uh, reports, I think was it uh, yesterday um, or the day before, and it did actually say that uh, Carlo Ancelotti um, is set to fly into London uh, to all the talks uh, with Everton uh, regarding uh, the managerial uh, role. And it did say now Everton um, are the favourites, you know, to actually you know, recommend Ancelotti in um, over um, Arsenal. Because don't forget, you know, um, Arsenal um, have been um, in uh, for um, Ancelotti. I think Arsenal have got a couple of uh, reservations um, about recommending him in. Um, I've got to be honest, though, he is one of the most you know, decorated managers um, of all time is Ancelotti, you know, because he's got a fantastic pedigree behind him, you know, he's won um, a lot of uh, silverware um, as Carlo Ancelotti, you know, during um, his managerial uh, career, but he's uh, now uh, 68 years um, old. Um, he did confirm that Arsenal and Everton, you know, would not have to pay anything in compensation uh, to Napoli to recommend him in, you know, this uh, recently Carlo Ancelotti, um, had joined um, a London-based uh, um, agency, you know, because obviously, you know, he wants uh, an immediate uh, return uh, to uh, management. Um, he was sacked by Napoli um, on Tuesday, despite the fact that Napoli, you know, won 4-0 against Genk. And, you know, Napoli obviously, you know, progressed um, into the uh, knockout uh, stages um, of the Champions League. Um, but if I don't think he'd call on Chalai at this day and age, you know, would be able to, you know, elevate Arsenal forward or probably wouldn't be able to elevate um, Everton uh, forward. You know, like I said, he's managed in the Premier League because he had a good spell with Chelsea. You know, he won the double with Chelsea, the Premier League and the FA Cup. But I don't, he achieved great success with Chelsea, but... I think I don't think he'd do that um, at Arsenal um, or Everton. You know, he's managed to various other clubs as well. You know, he won titles in Germany, France and Italy. You know, he's managed the likes of, you know, Parma, Juventus, AC Milan. He had a long spell with AC Milan, PSG, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Chelsea, you know, recently Napoli. So there's a lot of clubs um, he has uh, managed um, as Ancelotti. Um, but yeah, if he's to, you know... Come to the if he's to reunite in the Premier League, I think you know it's more imminent that he'll go uh, to Everton um, over um, Arsenal. But maybe they could keep Duncan Ferguson on. Um, you know, obviously if he gets a few wins under his belt, then maybe they will keep him on. But I uh, can't uh, see um happening. Obviously, you know Duncan Ferguson knows Everton well. You know, just uh, like um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer know, knows uh, Man United well. You know, obviously, you know, you've got Lampard at Chelsea, who knows Chelsea well. Lundberg at Arsenal, who obviously you know, knows Arsenal well. But again, isn't Lundberg, isn't, I don't think he's good enough, you know, to be a manager. Was a good player for Arsenal, but 
I think he know as a manager um, is totally comparison uh, to as he uh, was um, as a player. Um, um, obviously, like I said as well, uh, for the game tomorrow, uh, Solskjaer uh, will uh, make um, a variety um, of changes. Definitely will make um, a variety um, of changes. You know, because obviously, you know, he rested uh, quite a lot of uh, key uh, players um, against uh, AZ Altmar. And that's obviously, you know, a sensible thing to do because he knew, obviously, you know, Everton was on the horizon. And in general, general anywhere, uh, games um, are coming up uh, thick um, and fast. Um um, obviously, Luke Shaw was rested, you know, against Altmar. So, too, was Alan Wambasaka. Freddie McTom were arrested, you know, Rashford were arrested. Lindelof arrested. But I do believe tomorrow they will um, all all will be uh, back um, in the team. Um, obviously, you know, we have uh, still uh, got uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, as you all know. Um, obviously, um, I presume Jesse Lingard's being further checked today. As Solskjaer, you know, did uh, say um, in his uh, press conference uh, yesterday. Um, because he Solskjaer revealed that Jesse Lingard uh, didn't train yesterday but overall he said you know he's been training and you know he's uh, now uh, fit uh, Jesse Lingard uh, did uh, sustain um, a knock in the 2-1 uh, win um, against uh, Manchester City so due to that uh, he couldn't uh, play um, against uh, AZ uh, Altmar um, I've got to say, I think, you know, recently, you know, Jesse Lingard um, has rejuvenated um, himself and I know I criticised him um, earlier on um, in the season, you know, because he wasn't performing uh, to the standards um, as we should um, expect of him, but Jesse Lingard um, is definitely, you know, still uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United and Solskjaer recently admitted, you know, that, um, you know, um, he's been affected, you know, by um, off-field um, issues, um, but, you know, his injury um, is not severe, which is uh, very, very um, good uh, news. But he's, hope he's hopeful Jesse Lingard, he's hopeful Jesse Lingard will be available tomorrow. Um, he revealed as well, did Solskjaer during the press conference, so, you know, that Paul Pogba, um, Eric Bay, Fossil Mensu um, are all set to return uh, to training next week, uh, which is uh, very, very um, good news. Uh, as you all know, uh, Paul Pogba um, has been um, out uh, with um, an ankle injury. Um, he's been out uh, with this injury uh, for uh, three months, so obviously you know, um, it has uh, been uh, severe. So Pogba um, has not uh, been um, in action uh, since uh, September. So the last uh, league game um, he did uh, play was uh, the 1-1 uh, draw uh, with Arsenal. Um, but yeah, um, and Solskjaer, don't forget, you know, said, you know, when he's obviously, you know, regained full fitness, he will uh, get um, a lot of uh, games um, under um, his belt uh, because he's obviously, you know, missed uh, the vast uh, majority um, of our uh, games uh, this season uh, due uh, to um, injury, you know. Um, but Solskjaer knows how much of an imperative player he is, you know. Obviously, you know, Solskjaer says, you know, he's one of the uh, best um, in the world, you know, when he's, you know, playing uh, to his uh, potential uh, best. Um you know, but recently Solskjaer defended his professionalism, you know, this is what he said, and um, um, and Solskjaer, you know, said, you know, he's hopeful, uh, he's hopeful that, you know, he will be uh, back uh, by uh, the end um, of the year. Paul Pobbers all, um, he did actually say he's set to miss the Colchester game in the Cowbell Cup quarterfinal, he's also, um, well, he's set to miss tomorrow's game, and, you know, the Colchester game, but should be uh, back uh, for uh, the Watford game. If he isn't back for the Watford game, he should be uh, back uh, for the Newcastle uh, game um, on uh, Boxing Day. And I still believe uh, that Paul Pobber uh, wants him um, out um, of the football club um, because he obviously you know, wanted to leave for the entirety of the summer transfer window. But I think the stumbling block was you know, affecting on the substantial amount we put on him because we wanted around 150, 160 million. You know, Real Madrid were not willing to pay it. Real Madrid were relentlessly linked with him during the summer. Zinedine Zidane identified Paul Pogba as his number one uh, priority uh, target. Um, and I think Real Madrid will definitely reignite their interest next year. You know, obviously there was talks about him possibly making a return back to Turin. Because uh, he did enjoy four good years with Juventus, you know, his vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison, you know, um, to his uh, performances um, at Juventus. Um, obviously, there's been speculation about him going uh, to Barcelona um, in the past. Um, but Pogba's 26, you know, he's still in his prime, still got um, a lot of uh, development um, in him. But he said at the beginning of the summer anywhere that he was seeking for a new challenge and, you know, that he uh, wanted uh, to leave uh, the football club. Um, but Pogba's still got, what, 18 months left on his contract at Man United. But we do have an option to extend it uh, by um, a further year, you know, and that. But, um, yeah. Uh, Bay's obviously been out of an injury. You know he hasn't uh, played uh, since uh, pre-season. 
you know, he's sustained quite a lot of injuries as a Manchester United player. Got to say, he's very injury prone. Uh, but when he's fully fit, you know, his distribution's good. He's got great potential and that. Uh, very, very good player he's by. I think maybe we could get rid of him, maybe not next year, but in the future, you know, reflect on the injuries he's sustained as a Man United player. And Fossil Mensu has been out with an injury. Um, he hasn't, uh, you know, played... Uh, for a while, you know, I think he initially sustained uh, this knee injury uh, whilst he was on loan uh, with Fulham uh, last season. Uh, Diego Dalot uh, is still out, by the way. Um, he's at, he's sustained uh, quite um, a few um, injuries this season. Um, is Diego uh, Dalot, you know, um, I think he's out uh, with um, a leg injury. Um, is Diego uh, Dalot, you know, but it's good that anyway, you know, recently players um, have come back from injury. You know, Luke Shaw came back from a hamstring injury not too long ago. You know, Marshall initially, you know, just come back from a muscular problem. Um, but Tom Way came back, recovered from injury not too long ago because he was initially out uh, with an ankle injury. Um, but um, yeah, it's good that, you know, players are coming uh, back from injury. But reflects on the amount of injuries uh, we've had this season um, anywhere. Uh, Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, alterations um, in the squad, you know, and that. And, uh, and um, you know, Solskjaer, obviously, like I said, you know, praised, um, you know, the academy, you know, during uh, the press conference, you know, he actually, you know... Um, He said um, he's proud. Um, he's proud um, of us, you know. Uh, f he's proud um, of us, you know, for including you know an academy player, you know, in every uh, match day uh, squad, you know, since uh, nineteen thirty seven. So he also mentioned that uh, during um, his press conference, you know. Uh, but yeah, we have to uh, win uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I think you know we can get that top four now. I know I fully uh, disregarded it around three or four weeks ago because it was looking a. Uh, you know, very unlikely. You know, I was uh, very, very um sceptical um, about it. But we are definitely not in it now. We're now sixth in the league. Um, obviously, you know, reflecting um, on today's results, you know, Sheffield United have gone one point above us. They beat Aston Villa 2-0. But we win tomorrow. We are just uh, two points uh, behind uh, Chelsea. Um, but, um, yeah, like I said, there's still a long way to go. 17 games into the Premier League season now. Um. You know, so there's still around, what, 21, 21 22 games remaining. Uh, so these are still uh, lots of uh, points uh, to uh, play for. But I didn't actually confirm, didn't I, um, at the start of this season that I didn't expect us to win the league this season or mount any kind of title challenge up. But, um, you know... Um, I did say, you know, I expected us to enjoy a better season this season uh, than what we uh, saw uh, last season because last season uh, was a huge uh, disappointment. And like I've said on my recent videos, you know, Solskjaer is inheriting a good squad. He's inheriting a good squad. You know, there's a lot of good players in our team, you know, because a lot of money has been invested into the football club um, in the last six or seven years, you know, in all the managerial areas. You know, around £600, £700 million pounds has been spent recruiting new players in. You know, that's not that's disregarding uh, what was uh, spent um, under um, Alex Ferguson. You know, we've also got uh, players um, on big uh, contracts um, at the football club. Uh, so a lot of money's been spent. And like I said, it's not always about spending big on players and, you know, getting uh, them glad to go players. You know, it's not always about uh, doing that. Maybe sometimes it's beneficial uh, to be uh, sensible uh, with uh, your recruitment Um But I think, you know, reflecting um, on our uh, good uh, run um, of form uh, recently, you know, um, you know, it, it, it changed a lot of Man United's fans' perceptions regarding Solskjaer. Now, you may get a few or quite a lot of Manchester United fans that, you know, are backing him and, you know, believe, you know, he's a long-term uh, solution uh, for the football club. But reflecting back before the Tottenham game and early on in the season, you know, there was a lot of Manchester United fans uh, demanding him um, out um, of the football club. But it seems now that um, he's uh, turned um, a corner. And I hope his managerial tenure at Manchester United works out anywhere. But like I said, whether it does or whether it doesn't, you know, we'll never forget, you know, what he has uh, done uh, for uh, the football club, you know... Like I said, you know, there's some aspects of me that, you know, praise Solskjaer. You know, he's got a lot of trustworthy in his young upcoming players. He did confirm at the start of this season that all the young upcoming players would get given their chances and they have been given their chances. He initially confirmed when he first came into the club anywhere that everybody, you know, would get the chance, you know, to express themselves. Um, he's also done that. But, you know, a fair play to him for that. Um... 
you know, but like I said, I think, you know, there's a lot of young players in the squad that are developing and trying to improve. And I can assure that the likes of Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams, Tuan Zebe, um, you know, Jimmy, Jim, James Garner or Jimmy Garner, you know, I think they'll all become successes um, at the football club, definitely. Um, I've got to say, I think Mason Greenwood, you know, should be playing more on a regular basis. So Solskjaer needs to go with him more because... Um, you know, I think he's a better solution than, you know, well, not. I said early on in the season he was a better solution than Rashford. You know, this is when obviously, you know, Rashford um, was, in a bad, was in a bad run of form. But recently, you know, Rashford um, has stepped up to the plate. Uh, but I think as Mason Groom develops more, he will, you know, I think overcome Rashford. He'll probably become a better uh, goal scorer than Rashford. May even um, overcome uh, Anthony uh, Martial. But he does uh, need to uh, play more, uh, does uh, Mason uh, Greenwood. Um, more near the age um, of 18. He scored six senior goals for the football club this season. He scored two goals um, against uh, Altmar. You know, a very, very um, good uh, player. And you've got to say, Brandon Williams now is our first choice left back. We've got a variety of full backs that can compete anywhere, but. Um, Brandon Williams is a much better solution than Ashley Young, definitely, and Luke Shaw. Um, but I've been very, very impressed there with Brandon Williams, and he's um, only the age of 19. Tuan Zebe is obviously another option in that centre back position, despite the fact that, you know, that's, you know, Lindelof and Harry Maguire are our first choice centre backs. But Tuan Zebe is a very, very um, good uh, player. So it's good now he's uh, back home in the team anywhere. I've got some element of concerns about some of the young upcoming players. So this is why I did say it would be beneficial if we did get rid of some of the young upcoming uh, players uh, next year. I've got element of concerns about Chon and, you know, Angel Gomez. Uh, I know Angel Gomez is another one um, of our uh, midfield um, options in that. Um, but, um, yeah, um, but I've got to be honest, um, I think recently, you know, a lot of aspects um, of our uh, game um, have definitely improved. Don't get me wrong, you know, there's still some aspects of our game that need to improve and that, you know, we've got to try to perform for the full 90 minutes. You know, that's, you know, one thing that needs to improve. Um, but recently, you know, we've been creating chances. We've been, we've seen to have that clinical element element in front of goal. And you know, for the vast majority of this season, you know, we haven't really been clinical. Last season wasn't clinical enough. That's the explanation why I wasn't scoring enough goals. Um, I think recently certain players have stepped up to the plate. You know, we've also showed a lot of tactical tactical flexibility recently, which I'm uh, very very um delighted um about. And I know I've criticised Solskjaer, you know, for his. You know, because he's been tactically naive for the vast majority of this season, I've got to be honest. But recently, you know, that has definitely nowhere changed. So I'm very, very um, delighted um, about that. And, you know, I think we've got to improve our uh, improve um, our record against lower opposition because our record against lower opposition hasn't been good this season. But against elite opposition, it's been totally comparison because we've done really, really well against elite opposition this season. We've beaten, you know, City. We've beaten Tottenham. We've be beaten Leicester at home. We've beaten Chelsea at home at the beginning of the season. You know, drew with Liverpool at Old Trafford. You know, we're the only team this season to take uh, many points there from them um, in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, so it just proves on the day, you know, we are uh, capable um, of beating um, anybody, you know. But um, I do presume Solskjaer will go with a 4 2 3 one tomorrow, by the way, because he's been going with that formation um, on a regular uh, basis uh, this season, um, as you were, Mara, um, all I'm aware of. A um, couple of times he's gone, you know, like with a 3 5 2 or the 3 4 1 2. You know, he went with the 3 5, uh, the 3 5 2, was it against Liverpool? I think he went with like, you know, three at the back against, was it? Um, I think against you know Partizan Belgrade away from home, you know three at the back against Sheffield United, you know. Um, but yeah, I've been very very impressed recently. So I think the players as well are keeping faith in Solskjaer, you know, because they recently uh, merged uh, the board uh, not to uh, sack uh, Solskjaer. And obviously, if we decided to sack him within this free, you know, three year period anyway, it cost we'd have to pay something in compensation to get him out and that. Uh, but I'm very skeptical that we'll sack him, especially you know now. I think you know he will he will be here uh, for at least um you know he will be here at least uh, for uh, this uh, season. Um, but I think he's going to get the time, you know, that he's uh, demanding anywhere uh, from uh, the football club. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have given him the job. Maybe we sh we give. Maybe we should have given him the job, but maybe we should have given it at a later point. You know, maybe we've given it. Uh, we've overscheduled it and we've given it too early. You know, but you know where we will uh, see um, anywhere. So anyway, guys, that's 
everything's up there. You even know with the transfer news and everything else. Drop me comments like below on the channel. If you do consider subscribe, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching.